uh, is I would just like to uh, add uh, some experiences because we are using Fibra for more than, I mean, it, uh, almost like a decade. But um, we also started to use another, uh, uh, we also started to use Islandora uh, two years ago. So I just would like to share in a few sentences these experiences. Uh, from the user's point of view, my colleague Nemanja is also present uh, uh, here, so he can add something if uh, it's about infrastructure or more detailly about technical technical issues. So um, we are a Fedra user from 2011, and we are one of the Fedra partners. We are using this repository, it's institutional repository for a PhD thesis. And uh, the reason is, of course, the permanent, permanent archiving, the possibility of permanent archiving, which is um, uh, uh, as we are deposited uh, library uh, for that kind of documents. Um, but um, FEDRA was not as Roman told us once uh, many years ago, uh, FEDRA is not an uh, easy tool, so it is kind of, we wanted some kind of, of uh, more adjustable. Um, a few years ago, we had that project uh, for uh, Serbian literary criticism, and we used Islandora 7, so this is one, one more uh, example of uh, Islandora use. Uh, and um, for for particular uh, kind of, of of material, uh, and uh, it's um, uh, it's uh, of course archiving and self archiving uh, archiving too. So um, why what can we do? Can we help more? Uh, 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 what what would be our favorite? <laughs> repository or a system uh, or uh, that is application of Fedora? Well, it's hard to say because uh, the, the, the impression or the experience is said that Fedra, uh, Fedra is very neat, very uh, simple, so that is user-friendly friendly tool. Uh, the, the, the um, um, question legal of legal um, issues is very strong on the top uh, it's, it's, it's one of the top uh, top issues of that system so um, the point is that user can find this issue very very important and they it's not not very uh, it's it's very clear to user what can it it use uh, on the other hand uh, islandora um, is I, I can say at the moment more adjustable, and this experience is still to to grow uh, uh, and to to be developed further. So I hope that that uh, uh, we will of course pass through Islandora seven to Islandora eight, and that will find uh, the other the other possibilities. Um, the point is that, for example, next uh, project that we are intent to uh, to develop, like uh, uh, the like archiving of ethnographic data, and uh, we found that question: what uh, repository to choose for that uh, for that project? Uh, and we, after all these experiences, we decided to return. To FIDRA when, of course, when time comes, because these uh, these uh, projects were intended for this year, but it is prolonged for probably next year. So, uh, because we think that ethnographic data uh, is very compatible with the possibilities of uh, of Fedora, with uh, several uh, kind of documents, we are library, we are depositing, of course, documents uh, mainly, and uh, uh, this uh, this challenge to uh, to um, gather together in one uh, in one object several types of documents. I think that Fedra uh, gives very very good possibilities. Okay, and that's about that. Just a short uh, 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 impressions and sharing experiences. 
So if my colleague wants something to add, he can do it. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you very much. Very interesting to uh, hear from uh, uh, a place that has tried both Phaedra and uh, Islandora and uh, can speak a little bit to the, uh, the differences. Um, yeah, we have some time here again for questions. Uh, so feel free to unmute uh, or type into the chat if, uh, if you have anything. Okay, well, I'm not uh, seeing anything in the chat. Um, so, uh, so thanks again and um, you can feel free to uh, stop your uh, screen share whenever you're, uh, whenever you're ready. Um, and uh, this, uh, this concludes the, the, uh, the, the presentation um, side of things. So um, we, uh, uh, we do have some time now at the end uh, that we've reserved um, uh, just for general uh, questions and discussion. So uh, this can last as short or as long as, as, as we need. There, there's, there's certainly plenty of time. Um, but uh, I'd be interested to hear if, uh, uh, if anyone has, um, uh, well, first of all, any questions for any of the speakers today that they didn't get a chance to ask. Um, but also if you have any uh, impressions of the event that you'd like to share or uh, suggestions for things that you would like to see next time we try to organize uh, such an event, uh, uh, thoughts on how often to, to do this or who else we might want to include, um, uh, anything like that. So I'll, I'll pause there, just you know, feel free to um, jump in with any of your thoughts or comments uh, and, and as well, the, uh, if any of the uh, other organizers would like to, um, uh, to say anything here, um, feel free to do so. Um, I'd like maybe to, to, to say uh, thank you also to David to make this happen uh, from, from the European time zone because I think it's, it's important also to, to have uh, the possibility also to get together from the European perspective and see uh, what the European Fedora community is doing. So I think this was a great event or this is still a great event. In terms of running this uh, particular session, I'd like to say my own thanks to David for uh, initiating it, certainly. Um, one of the questions I was keen to ask people is that um, in pulling together a user group like this, is I think it's the first time we've done something that's cross Europe um, for a, a while, uh, which is great. Um, and I suppose I'm curious as to how people find um, if they if they look to try and promote or talk about Fedora in their own countries or their own sectors or communities, uh, what feedback they get, and uh, because I'm always curious to understand why people in Europe maybe don't make as much use of Fedora as uh, maybe they do in North America, um, and is it purely because of geography or is it to do with the technologies or whatever it happens to be? Um, if people have any immediate feedback on that, it'd be fascinating to hear, but I suppose I'm also interested to understand how we might, again, look into Fedora 6, how we might help to promote that uh, within across Europe uh, to help other people appreciate and uh, understand uh, the value that using Fedora brings. Uh, Chris, uh, from uh, my position, uh, one problem of Fedora, I mean, is uh, that every year, every year there is a new uh, uh, major release of Fedora with new, uh, with, with the uh, need of uh, new ingest of data in this uh, in this new version. Uh, that's a problem for uh, for uh, repositories that that are stored long time archiving data, uh, research data. So. We have no time to uh, uh, reconfigure our systems every every year. It would, uh, it would be a good uh, strategy that the new major release uh, brings new features, but uh, the problem of the data base is uh, is, from my opinion, uh, important reason why. Uh, sometimes people do not use Fedora. Uh, 
Um, fair enough. I think I've heard that uh, myself um, um, in conversations with other people. Um, and I would hope, bearing in mind particularly what David said about OCFL earlier, that uh, moving forward with OCFL in Fedora 6 would help to try and address that concern to some extent. Yeah, maybe I, um, I can add another aspect to this because I would say that a lot of institutions like smaller university libraries lack the technical staff to um, figure out how to install Fedora. And we are very happy to have Jaime in Munich to set up the Fedora infrastructure, but I have the feeling that a lot of smaller university libraries or other institutions tend to use more like out of the box systems like DSpace or ePrints, mm -hmm. which they also use for research data. So I think it's a very big step to just start um, making the decision to go to Fedora because it means that you have to like invest a lot of time to set it up as well and then also keep it running. So I would say that's a very big aspect that is present in a lot of university libraries in Germany. Mm -hmm. I'm sure service providers like DocuTeam would say that that's why they exist. Yeah, and I, uh, you know, Melissa could certainly speak to this, but I, I also think that's a major reason why um, platforms like uh, Islandora and, and Simbera and, and I'm sure Phaedra as well exist as a way to try to provide a more packaged uh, version of Fedora um, that doesn't necessarily meet everyone's use cases. Sometimes, you know, institutions have very specific use cases that call for a, a custom implementation, but um, particularly, I, I think, with the, from what I understand of the, the new version of Islandora, um, version 8, there, there's a lot of effort being put into kind of deployment. Um, and I don't know, Melissa, if you wanted to say something about um, Isle in particular as a way to sort of get up and running a little bit easier than um, you know, doing a custom install, which, which is, you know, can be challenging. Yeah, that would be the, uh, the dockerization that I had as a, as a bullet point on, on one slide. That's the, the Isle project, it's called, and that's basically Dockerized Deployment of Islandora. And our next phase for that is to um, work in Kubernetes. So it would be um, an auto-scaling automatic deployment of Islandora, but that's, that's future development. Right now it's, it's fixed in terms of scaling. We are, we are facing pretty much the same issue and we are, uh, we are a little bit behind. But uh, on our roadmap with also dockerization of uh, Phaedra, so uh, that gets easier also for updates and get easier for deployment. Um, so I think we are facing pretty much the same problems. Um, I would like to add to that. Uh, in our case, uh, we decided to work with Fedora because um, I mean, with Fedora instead of a pre-packaged solution, because um, that way we can we could stay um, flexible with the systems we want to integrate. Um, for instance, um, that way, uh, when um, if we would have decided. Uh, to work with Samvera or with Alandora in the first place, uh, we, we will be tied to um, um, a specific version of Fedora. And that was the reason why uh, we actually started this project a little bit away only with a standalone version of Fedora. And um, so we can choose what, what uh, to integrate this system with. In order to, to talk about the why Fedora. It is, all, it is always a trade-off between uh, wanting something that's uh, flexible in terms of what you want to build and having the ability to pragmatically manage that yeah. um, over time. Uh, I should say, just uh, bearing in mind what Melissa said there about Kubernetes, uh, that the project we have at the moment about building a digital archive, which is being supported by CoSector in London, um, they are using Kubernetes for rolling it out um, uh, the Samvera solution in that instance, uh, which has worked very well. So it's been. Well, it's certainly interesting to hear there are a lot of common challenges. I mean, I, I do think that's one of the value of the user group meetings in particular uh, compared to more general 
conferences as an opportunity to talk about kind of what your challenges are locally, sort of what you're looking uh, forward to over the next couple of years. Um, I mean, certainly that was a big part of the discussion at the last um, meeting we had for um, the American time zones um, last month. So um, yeah, just happy to hear sort of different experiences that uh, uh, the folks are having. Um, I'm curious, you know, if we were to organize another meeting like this, um, if anyone has input on sort of how often such meetings are useful, is it every six months, is it annually? Um, and if, uh, uh, if there are other things besides presentations and discussion that we should um, consider for uh, future meetings to, to make sure that they're useful for everyone. I think the, we should have this kind of meetings, uh, this user group meetings regularly. I'm not sure about the frequency, uh, but at least I think once a year would be nice. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I would say at least once a year. Um, I don't know, maybe even even twice, like Or maybe what we do with our own user group, we have like one more of uh, um, like a community day where we also have a lot of presentations of like uh, new projects or or new new features and so on. <clears throat> and there's also a discussion, as uh, I mean, as always, and there is like more of a user group where um, the focus is really on also discussing problems or or uh, discussing like open issues or, or general uh, uh, difficulties people might have and, and more like an open forum where you can ask questions has anyone else had this problem or um, and so you get like both on one, you get more like information and then can, there can be like talks like today, I would say, and the other one can also be shorter than maybe even only like one hour or two hours, depending on how much questions there are and how much discussion, discussion is going on. Yeah, I, uh, I'd support my colleague Thomas and um, maybe also gave him the specific timeline now of Fedora 6 and, and migrations ahead of us. Um, I, I think it's difficult to say whether it's a one year calendar or a half a year, but certainly at some point after the first, like uh, we're, we're planning to do early migrations. We've heard uh, uh, from others today that they're planning to move on uh, as quickly as possible. Um, I think it would make sense to, to get a, another call as soon as some of us have have done the, the first migration steps, um, I think that would be would be a good point in time. Yeah, that, that that sounds reasonable to me. So you're thinking maybe you know after some people have some experience with migrations, that might be a good opportunity to come and talk about those experiences and and maybe share some some things and ask ask questions. That kind of thing. So, would it be reasonable to just send out a, a notification on on the user group um, when someone like, if we start like doing a test migration, have uh, first results? I mean, we're also part of the Fedora Six pilot, so. Um, for others to see, oh yeah, they they have some experience, they have had some problems, maybe it might make sense to get in touch with them. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I certainly think if, uh, if there's some initial experience to share, um, sending that out uh, on the mailing list to the user groups, yeah. um, even to the community generally. I think we're going to be trying to do a lot of that um, as the start experiences start to um, occur. So yeah, I think that's yeah, a good yeah, idea. Of course. Um, other comments or ideas um, from anyone in terms of uh, 
um, these meetings going forward. Um, I think those are some great suggestions and, and certainly um, once we have a little bit more experience with migrations that that might be another uh, good point to consider um, organizing another meeting and, and maybe that's in six months and maybe it's in eight months, you know, just whenever there's a few uh, migration experiences to share that that might be a nice um, condition for for uh, the next meeting. Okay, um, I don't know if anyone else, uh, whether from the organizers or, or any of the other attendees, um, if there are any other questions or, or comments that anyone would like to raise, we, we do have a little bit of time, but of course we can um, wrap things up whenever uh, uh, whenever appropriate. I might have a small question about the long-term archiving of the data that is in Fedora, because recently there was a um, workshop on Beyond the Repository and the project that also included Fedora, and there was the mention of the Beckett profile, and I was just curious about how it's used and what are the plans for Fedora 6 regarding Beckett and long-term archiving. Do we have any information on that, David? Or? Um, I don't have uh, a lot of firsthand information on that. And if anyone else does, um, you'd be welcome to, to add that in here. Um, I know that that project had, um, uh, you know, yeah, they spent some time putting together a Bagot profile. And I think the idea there is that you can um, export your content from a Fedora instance as bags to go put somewhere else um, as part of an overall long-term digital preservation strategy, the idea being that it, it's good practice to store your data in multiple kind of places, different geographic locations, different operating systems, things like that. I mean, there, there's a, a lot that you could sort of say about digital preservation practices. Um, and so that may be just one kind of component. Um, it, it's not to say that your content in Fedora uh, isn't, uh, you know, uh, being preserved for the long term. I think it's more just that in addition to storing your content in Fedora, it's a good idea to have copies in other places. So I, I think that's sort of the, the intent. Um, yeah, and I do know that uh, the, I've, I've heard the Oxford Common File layout itself described as, you know, uh, a Bagot with versioning, um, because Bagot doesn't support versioning. Um, so I, I think the content being stored in Fedora 6 in particular is, is pretty um, preservation friendly, but yeah, that, that's, and others that want to weigh in, feel free. That, that, that's how I would think about that is that, you know, storing your content in Fedora is a good step, um, but it's also a good idea to have copies in other places um, for disaster recovery situations. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. <laughs> sure. Hey, David, can you hear me? Yeah. Josh. Hey, Josh. Um, hello, everyone. Um, coming to you from Washington, D.C. in the U.S. And sorry, I've only made it to the toward toward the end of the meeting uh, due to the time zone, but. Um, I could add just a little bit to that question about preservation with OCFL. I think one of the advantages of moving to OCFL uh, is that uh, not only will you have the ability to, to extract an OCFL object, so an individual item in your repository can be stored on disk in an OCFL object, uh, your entire storage layer will be OCFL. So you'll have all of your content that way. And the advantage that gives you is that you don't no longer have this uh, need for an export tool like what you do with the current Fedora, where you, you, you have to serialize individual items out from the repository to put somewhere else. And that's not a very practical solution if you have, say, a, a disaster recovery situation. You wouldn't want to have to recall each item and then restore it back to your repository. So by having OCFL be the storage layer, I think we get the best of both worlds in that we could restore the entire storage layer as a thing, but we can also 
um, extract out individual items. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very hopeful that this is going to make a lot of these tasks that we have to do easier. Yeah, thanks, Josh. I, I think um, it, it will be very interesting once we have Fedora 6 uh, in, a, in beta and, and ready for sort of more widespread testing, um, just to see, uh, hear about uh, everyone's experience with these digital preservation uh, features that uh, we're, we're adding to the software um, and the, you know, the OCFL in particular. Um, anything else that anyone would like to add before we wrap things up here? Okay, well, uh, thanks everyone for attending and, and to the, uh, my fellow organizers here for, for you know, putting this, uh, this meeting together. Um, we will put together a survey and, and send everyone to, and, and so if you do have some feedback that um, you know, occurs to you afterwards, uh, uh, you know, if you take a, a few minutes to fill out the survey, we'll make sure it's brief. Um, that'll just help us inform future meetings, but it does sound like uh, once we get a little bit of migration experience and, and folks have some, um, you know, stories to share that uh, that might be a good opportunity to think about um, the next meeting. Um, as I said, these uh, presentations are all recorded as well. So once I have a chance to edit those and put them on YouTube, I'll send some links out. And uh, if you haven't already shared your slides, if you could um, send me a link or, or attach them as an email attachment, um, I can uh, upload all the slides to the wiki. Um, I'll just make sure they're all uh, accessible. Um, and uh, otherwise, yeah, thanks again. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll do this again soon and, and feel free to get in touch um, uh, with me or, or uh, any of the organizers if you have uh, further questions or, or feedback. Thank you. Okay, bye then. Thanks everyone. Have See you next day. time. Bye. Thank you. Bye.